welcome back. And now we meet Aberdeen's most famous daughter, whose original intention was to become a classical musician. Her doubts about the wisdom of that choice were confirmed when she heard her first Stevie Wonder record. After performing with various groups, she met a gent called Dave Stewart. Together, they went on to form the Eurythmics, and I don't need to remind you what happened after that. After a couple of years off, she's worked on two major productions, her daughter Lola and her new solo album. And here now with her new single, Why, ladies and gentlemen, Annie Lennox.
Annie, that was a most beautiful song, but what is why? Is it a bit of autobiography? Oh, it's a bit of a this and a bit of a that, actually, Michael. Oh, yes, I see. Well, that's Toby. Um, why have you been away so long? What have you been up to? Um, well, I was having a rest, actually, because um, I'd been um, a eurythmic for about uh, ten years, you know, and doing all sorts of things before that, and I was terribly tired, actually. And, um, no, seriously, I know I have to be very... This is a serious show, isn't it? Well, you parts of very it, yes. serious. <laughs> One third of it. All right, so I will be serious now. I'm going to tell you about what I did. Yes, um, well, I had a baby, and I had um, time to think, and um, decided that I wanted to write my own record. And uh, so, after my baby was about four months old, you know all about babies, don't you? We did it at the yeah. same time. Yes, we did. Will is the only one who doesn't know about babies, if you see what I mean. Tell them. Yeah. <laughs> Does this mean the end of the Eurythmics? Um, mm, well, uh, possibly, maybe. I don't know, really. Oh, that's a very straightforward answer. Mm. <laughs> oh, I'm a very straightforward sort of person. Yes. Well, now, why is, is, a, is a forthcoming single, of course, from Diva, your album? Is that how you see yourself, a, a diva? Um, <clears throat> well, partly, I suppose. I think that... Um, uh, do you know anything about divas, actually, Ruby? Um, like to expound on the meaning of a diva, <laughs> darling? <laughs> well, darling, being a diva. Um, no, <laughs> I don't, we don't know divas. It. I think divas are people that get their own dressing room, unlike the three of us who had to share <laughs> <laughs> and not say anything. So, none of us are divas. A grand lady, isn't it, really? Grand singer. Yes, grand. Yeah. A lot of nail varnish. Mm. Very long talons. Right, we're going to show you a clip here oh. as a diva. All right. I can't go on living in the same sick junk It seems our lives have taken on a different kind of twist Now that you have given me the perfect Well, another lovely one. This was Venice in, when, February? Yes. Oh, what was that like? Freezing. <laughs> it's the sort of Did thing you would do. the pigeons do a lot of damage on that boa? Well... <laughs> <laughs> you know about that, Carol. I was discreetly trying to shoe them off, actually. We saw that's, them. That's what you call professionalism, you know, when you've got pigeons landing pigeon. on you, you've got feather boas trying to be glamorous, you know. Well, it's a very brave thing to do, stand in St Mark's Square, I presume, isn't it? And, uh, mm -hmm. and do that. And mm. in, must have been some interesting moments cut out of that video. There were. There were some very funny moments, actually. There was the bit where one of the guys with the, the sailors, you love this one, right. came up to me and he was looking at me and I'm standing there like this in my wonderfulness, and he said to me, Nice body. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, ah, Get them away from me. Mm. Was that an English sailor? No, he was Italian, actually. Mm. Did mm. he say it in Italian? Mm. No, he said it in English, because he knew I would understand his lingo. You know? mm, lovely. Mm. You get accosted by fans, Will. Mm. Mm. What do they do when fans come up to you? They don't say, nice body. Oh, no. No. <laughs> uh, no, they don't, no. Great brains. What do they say to one? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah. I'm kidding you. It's all right. I know. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. She didn't mean it. No, she didn't mean it. No. <laughs> I love her. <laughs> No, not, not really, not, not like right. this. She'll be nasty to you, right, and I'll be really It'll be lovely. It'll two sides right. of womanhood. I'm going to use them to crack eyes. Fabulous <laughs> 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 show. I'll answer your question now. Yes, well, I'll answer your question. So? Shh. Yeah, shush. <laughs> not really. I mean, sometimes, but n not massively. They just want autographs or whatever. And Is that all they want from you? It's all they want. You mean they don't so want your potty? They, no, they, no one's ever come up to me and said, nice body. It's a bit of a shame. Even I, when I, you're oiled? I've learned to... Uh... <laughs> it was worse then. What about you, Ruby? What? When I'm oiled, usually people, saw... <laughs> people say, can I sauté you? <laughs> um... <laughs> But nice of you to ask. <laughs> no, <I'm afraid. laughs> now, you and Dave Stewart had a remarkable and quite a unique relationship and uh, partnership, indeed, with uh, Eurythmics. Is it strange going on your own? 
Um, it's sort of solitary, I must admit. It's a lot cheaper, though, and me being Scottish, you know what I'm saying? Not that I want to sort of... I don't want to sort of expand on the myth of um, Scots meanness, no. Um, it's, uh, it's different, you know, and um, actually it's very exciting, and I quite am enjoying this. It's a challenge for me. I've read that you've said that to, be, to write good songs you need to be miserable. Do you really feel that? Um, I think that most writers would probably tell you that, because it's... Um, well, when you're miserable, you need to express something. I mean, you know, you don't really sort of feel like rushing off and writing songs when you're deliriously happy, you know. You've got nothing to say except just feel your happiness, you know. Because your songs have been so personal, I think you regard them as sort of writing a diary, don't you? I mean, uh, uh, Sweet Dreams, for example, that had a specific meaning, didn't it? Well, it's sort of, um, not really a diary as such. It's just that certain songwriters tend to write about other subjects, you know, that are outside of themselves, like stories. And I... Uh, talk about the way I feel. <laughs> you know, that's really how I sort of um, have my catharsis, my yeah. psychoanalysis. But that's how you feel at the time of writing. Is it painful to listen to them and remember? No, it's... Um, well, it would be if, if I didn't like the production or if I didn't think the songs were very good, it would be incredibly embarrassing. But uh, I do uh, actually like listening to the songs. Well, do you care about li lyrics or do you just like a good song? Good tune. He doesn't care. Those are the words. Um, I do. Those are the words he means Those by are lyrics. The words. Mm. <laughs> I like I both. I like both. I mean, obviously, I like a good tune, but if, it, if it's got a good lyrics, it's not just the same lyric time and time again. It's slightly more enjoyable. You probably just like the one lyric. <laughs> <laughs> but I know that you can sometimes sing for fun, and here's the evidence. If you're wise, exercise all the fat off. Take it off, off of here, off of there. When you're seen Your duty to be beautiful, that's right, girls. Keep young and beautiful if you want to be loved. Keep young and beautiful if you want to be loved. <laughs> that's brilliant. Well, that was fun. Did you do that just to break the mood on the album, or what? Well, it was just a throwaway song that just popped into my head one day, and um, we just thought it would be um, a kind of, uh, how can I say, just a joke, really, and something to lighten it up, because actually this, the album itself finishes in quite a sombre mood. And um, I do actually have a sense of humour occasionally. So um, just thought we'd throw it in, you know, and see what happened. But, um... In the videos you've done over the years, I mean, you've, uh, you've, you've done some extraordinary things, even dressing as a man. Was it your intention deliberately to shock? Um, well, I can, you know, I just like to feel as a uh, performer that you can do all sorts of things. And I just felt at the time that um, women singers have always been so perceived as kind of these mm, rather um, ador adorning sexual objects and um, to wear a man's suit gave me a sense of power as a performer like don't mess with me buddy you know now you've got baby lola and husband yuri and everything seems to be right is the balance absolutely there these days well i don't know i mean i don't know that the balance is ever right for anybody you know i mean you just try to keep it as you know just try to keep heart and soul together you know um, i'm i feel um very good about myself at the moment and i'm very excited about my record and <coughs> excited about being a mother, you know, the whole thing. And uh, as long as I'm healthy, I think that's the most important thing to me, actually. Well, the record is beautiful. And thank you very much for your company, Annie Lennox. Thank you. And Will Carlin. <laughs> and Ruby Wax. <laughs> and thanks for your company. See you next week. Good night. <laughs> Thank you.